Well, good morning and welcome to the Daily Service. It's great that you can join us as we continue our Advent series in Matthew chapter 24. Advent is a time of challenge and joy. And that note of challenge is picked up in the last words that Jesus says to Peter in John's Gospel. Let me read some to you. When they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Well, in our passage today, we hear of a master who goes away and puts his servant in charge of his household to feed the other servants. Let me read it. Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 to 51. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time, and he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus begins this section with a question. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? The question is an invitation. Who will we be? The servant who's found working when his master returns or the wicked servant who's off pleasing himself, forgetting that his master is going to return at all? If you stand at the top of the Rocky Mountains, just to one side, to the west side, a little uh, flake of snow will tumble down and melt and head right out into the Pacific Ocean. But just a few inches to the east side, the flake of snow would tumble down and head a different direction, melt and head out into rivers which flow into the Atlantic Ocean. Just a small divide at the start ends up thousands of miles away at the end. And in this parable, there is also a great divide. There is one key factor which makes the difference. Does the servant believe his master will return? Will Jesus really return on that last day? You see, if he believes his master could return at any time, he presses on with his job. Jesus says he is a faithful servant. He does the mask, the task his master asks him to do. But he's also a wise servant. He's thoughtful, intelligent. He knows his master will return, so he gets on with the work. Now the task of feeding Jesus, uh, other servants in Jesus' household is especially for the church minister. But it's also for every follower of Jesus. We all have that responsibility to use our gifts and opportunities to feed and encourage and help others in Jesus' family. It's the task Jesus has given us. And if we know he will return, we'll press on with that task, keeping in touch, perhaps meeting with our small group to read the Bible, praying, helping, serving. And what a promise Jesus gives to those who do that. Verse 47, he says, Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. 
What a privilege. But there is another option for this servant uh, if he makes a different decision. Verse 48. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, my master is staying away a long time. He begins to doubt if his master will ever return. He forgets his master. He forgets his position as a servant and pretends to be the master. He acts as if he's in charge. Jesus goes on. He then brings, uh, begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. And Jesus so loves his family, the servants in his household, that he deals in the very harshest way with any who abuse their position or hurt his people. Those last two verses, 50 and 51, are such a shock. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign them a place with the hypocrites, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It shows the depth of love and care that Jesus has for his people. Jesus will return, remembering that is one of the key ways to keep going in serving Jesus and his people. Too often we're forgetful and we fail to act wisely. We're disobedient. So let's now confess our sins and return to serving him faithfully. Let's pray this prayer of confession together. Lord, we have sinned. We've turned away from you and disobeyed you. We lift up our voice to you and cry for your mercy. There is no one else to whom we can go. Please save us from our sins and from the temptations that seem too strong for us. Please forgive us as you have promised through Jesus' death on the cross and help us to praise you as we should. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in Psalm 103, we read, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love your people enough to die for them. Thank you that you protect your people and will bring to account those who hurt your people. Give us the wisdom to know that you will return and the faithfulness to serve you until that day. Amen. We continue in prayer. We pray especially for those with responsibility for feeding the sheep in your church, for ministers of your word, for small group leaders, for each of us as we encourage one another. Make us faithful in passing on solid food to others, speaking the truth in love so that we can grow to maturity in Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. We continue to pray for the government as they make difficult decisions in all kinds of areas of our national life, in education, in social care, health care, finance and justice. Please give them humility, wisdom, perseverance as skill as they seek to serve this country and others around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we pray the Advent Collect together? Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in this time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, our song today rejoices in Jesus, our Redeemer, our Saviour and our Treasure. Do join in as we sing.
Well, let's say this final prayer from the book of Jude together. To him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and for evermore. Amen.